All right, so we have a, a bunch of ideas to work with, and it's a matter of actually doing this. So what we need to do is we have a WordPress account that we created last week. So let's go back to the website wordpress.com. Or again, if you've got your own website, you can use it. But I'm going to use the WordPress that I created last week. You should see a login button at the top right corner. Click to log in. Or if you'd like to create a brand new WordPress account for today, you can. You'll have to go through the process yourself under Create a Website. But I'm going to click Login. Login with the information that you used last week. Take a moment to sign in. All right, so is anyone having any trouble signing in? Question? Okay, so the thing with WordPress.com, it's one of these hosted solutions, which means that they take care of everything. The hosting, the domain, the server, the maintenance, all of that, uh, for exchange for some limitations. Now, it's also, I find it often a little cumbersome to, uh, to teach people this getting around WordPress because they seem to change it every once in a while and I might have like a different version than yours but the point is we have basically the wordpress.com aspect of it and your website I'm in wordpress.com here at the top left it shows my sites and reader because we can use wordpress.com to read other people's blogs subscribe to other people's blogs comment on other people's blogs and that's good because other people can do the same for us. Other WordPress.com users can find my site, comment on my site, subscribe to my site. So Reader is the whole aspect where you're following sites or you're being followed by other sites in the WordPress network. The value of that is that you could be found because we have a lot of people on WordPress that are into the long-form content. We've got my sites, which you can have multiple WordPress sites. So again, yours might look a little different. Let's say on mine, it looks something like this. I've got the name of my site, all of these settings, publish, personalize, etc. And on mine, because I've got more than one site, I have a button that says switch site. You might see, for example, add a new WordPress. You can have multiple free WordPress sites with one email address. Just as an example here, I've got these different sites, this test one and these other sites, that are all linked to the same email address, and I can create as many as I want. So I can create one blog about one topic, 
one blog about another topic and um, have at it. I can use as many as I as many I can make as many of these blogs as I want and use them how I want, basically. So the trick is to make sure you're if you've got more than one blog, to make sure you've got the right one selected. And then you're going to see something like mine, probably, uh, with buttons to add a post and all of that. But this is like training wheels. I, I hardly recommend or I hardly use this aspect of WordPress.com. If you're going to educate yourself more on WordPress, almost no books or articles are really talking about this interface. They're talking more about the WordPress dashboard the admin panel and the way to get to that uh, you may see the link here it's a WP admin that's what I want to look at if you don't see that another way to get to it is as I said last week you can always get back to your site but you have to have you have to know the address of your WordPress site and then at the end you can add slash WP dash admin so if you see a button on the left menu that says WP admin just click it but if you don't see that this is the other way to get back to that same screen you need to know the name of your website and then you'll type at the end that slash WP dash admin so let's go to the dashboard let's go to this admin screen And under this dashboard is what we want to um, what we want to work with. What well, we're going to use this to apply. Uh, what we're learning out in the hand in the hand. All right, so. What we are going to accomplish here, we can accomplish it also in the whatever this interface is called. I call it training wheels. In this interface, we have a button to add a blog post. In the grown up interface, the dashboard, we also have here posts, add a new post. And I'm saying I recommend to get more familiar with this interface than the other one because any tutorials about WordPress, any books about WordPress are going to talk about this, not the training wheels over here. So in the dashboard, we're going to focus on this. If you hover your mouse over posts, this will give you a list of all your posts, add a post, add or edit categories, um, or tags, and copy a post. That might be useful because let's say you're often writing a same sort of article with the same sort of structure, you can copy your posts. And as I said about um, on my handout, looking ahead a little bit, on my handout I had said about underwriting organization, categories and tags. And I had made the note, I recommend about your categories, set those up first, and then tags, add them after you've written something. So let's give that a shot. In the dashboard, under posts, hover over posts, and select categories. The default category is uncategorized. You want to um, create new categories and change the default category as soon as possible. Uh, the uncategorized category is what all your posts will be put into in the beginning, and it's worthless. You won't be able to get your stuff found if, it's, if it doesn't have a, the right categories. Um, so we'll deal with the existing category in a moment, but let's think in terms like this. Categories. I want to think about five or ten or a dozen or whatever. I want to think about different categories, different topics, different sort of like folders for you to organize 
your articles into. If I have Victor's Bakery, I'm probably going to be writing articles about recipes. So I should make a category called recipes. I'm going to be writing that uh, uh, spotlight of the month on my employees, so I can have a category called spotlight. It can be more than one word, it can be a complete sentence. But these things here are going to be like folders to organize your content. And it can be edited as many times as you want, of course. And I would recommend to write these with normal, normal words and spaces and capitals and all of that, meaning I can make a category called My Amazing Recipes. That's fine. I can make a category called Recipes. That's fine too. The point of maybe being more specific is you could think again in terms of your keywords. Keywords that people could be searching for. So what about the best recipes? I could have a category called the best recipes. People could be searching for that. The main thing about this, though, is the organization within your site. I'm going to do recipe of the month. I'm going to do a series of articles on this Victor's Bakery recipe of the month. So everything that's a recipe of the month will go into this category. Um, we can have parent and child categories. The example here is, you might have a jazz category, and under that have children categories of bebop and big band, and it's optional. So I'm going to be writing about jazz, but then this particular one is bebop style, and that's part of the larger family of jazz. Uh, I personally usually don't use child categories much. I personally haven't seen in my clients and such a need for it, but you could. Yeah, sure. I could have a large recipe section and then the recipes that I write, the recipes that my customers send in, um, new original recipe, classic recipe, yeah. So we could get as uh, complex as we want. This is a description box. Uh, depending on the theme, this may be visible or not, but uh, this could also be useful for your SEO, because if your theme shows it, uh, that could be keywords that could help you get found. So let's say a description here. Our uh, monthly articles on the best recipes you can make yourself easily. So because it depends on your theme, and we might have different themes, whatever we write here it might show up or it might not. So I'll click Add New Category. And on the right, then, it shows me I've got a new category, Recipe of the Month. There's my description, and it's got a slug. And the slug is just the, just the, the address, the short uh, name of what you wrote there. Notice it's lowercase, there's no spaces, it's got dashes. It's just uh, a placeholder, basically, for an address. And then on the right, it'll tell you a count of how many articles have been uh, organized with that category. So, just for a little bit of practice now, you try to think of a couple of more categories that might make sense. You can do it like this, where I'm thinking of Victor's Bakery, so you could do it there. Or if you're doing your own site, you could think of your own there. And if you make mistakes, you can hover over a category and click Edit or Quick Edit. To deal with that. So let me give you a quick moment. Think of maybe two more categories. Add them in. You can do child categories if you'd like. Think of two more categories, add them, and then we'll we'll go on.
You can have as many categories as you want, but remember earlier in the handout I said I recommend between one and three categories attached to a post. And the way that this is helpful when we do blogs for companies is that we, ha we have figured out these different ideas, these different keywords and topics that we want to get found for. So once we, we know these different ideas, then we can start to go in and craft these different uh, posts. Again, you can write whatever you want here or wrote, write what I wrote, but the concept is you want to make categories. So if you've got at least one, that's fine. If you've got more, that's fine. Any questions on categories? Let's go look at tags briefly, because like I said, with tags, I personally seem to do better when I add tags after I've written something. I might not have all the ideas here yet, so usually after I write something I add tags. So this is again, if I've got recipe of the month, I'm going to be publishing recipes about cookies, about um, you know chocolate chip cookies, or maybe uh, chocolate chip cake, or maybe you know donuts, chocolate donuts, all of these different kinds of things and they share chocolate. So any way to further organize or link them via tags is useful. Um, again, I will think about adding tags after we write. So I won't add anything here just yet. Under posts, let's click add new post. Add new. getting an overview of our screen here. We've got a spot for a title. We've got a spot for the actual content. On the right side we've got the spot for categories and tags. And because there's a lot of buttons, a lot to work with in WordPress, some things are hidden. So at the top right corner do you see screen options? click the Screen Options tab. Here's more things that we can work with that are hidden, things that are turned off. Just to see them all, turn on all these check marks. You don't always need them, but I'm going to turn them all on just to see what else we have. We can have everything in one column or two column. And we've got the distraction-free editor, meaning everything will hide once we're writing so that we're not distracted. But activating all these extra check marks now gives us new boxes. I've got the excerpt box. Excerpts are, hand, are optional handcrafted summaries. So we'll get to that when we talk about, remember I said, description. So we'll deal with that later. Uh, track backs are ways to notify legacy blog systems that you've linked to them. This one doesn't have as much use as it as it used to, but this is the way about getting these uh, these backlinks. And notice it's saying legacy blogs, so older blogs, older versions of blogs. If you link to other WordPress sites, they will be notified automatically. No other na action necessary. So this one is not that useful anymore. As more people use WordPress, as more people use mo uh, modern versions of WordPress, this is less relevant. There's a box of discussion. Would you like people to comment on your blog post on a case-by-case -case basis? Yes or no? If this topic is way too controversial, this, this, this cookie topic that I wrote is going to inflame way too much mm -hmm. passion. I can turn off the comments and then no one will comment. Exactly. It's, it's, a, it's a death battle, but I say frosting. So you can turn that on or off, but what I would recommend instead, leave it on 
And do you remember back last week under settings discussion, there was also an option there to activate moderation. Let people's comments appear until I approve them. So refer to last week, and we'll look at it later perhaps. But here's a way to uh, control the discussion in a positive way. Allow trackbacks and pingbacks. Usually you want this on. This is the modern way that it's saying about here. If I link my site to someone else's site and they've got WordPress, my site will tell their site we've linked. And once that other site, that author, that other site webmaster knows that my site exists, they could link back to me. They could give me back traffic. They, uh, they could help me out. Slug, don't worry about that. In this case, it fills itself in after we fill in the title. But if we wanted to change it, we could. And that's going to be the template of your address, your web address. Author, if you've got more than one person that has an account on your WordPress, and you can deal with all of that under users, if you invite more people to add to your site, that's a whole other process. But if you go off to users and add more people, then different people can write on your blog. And then here you can set that Ghostwriter has set that they are writing under my name. Or if you've got guest writers or paid writers, again, you have to decide who wrote that. And you can easily change it. You can put it I can put my name right now, or I can put someone else's and change it later if I want. Likes and shares, that's good. This is again about the uh, social for them. Let people that read my site be able to comment on my site. I can turn that off or on. If I don't want, uh, not comment, but to share on Twitter, share on Facebook, etc. If I don't want people to share my article on Facebook, I can turn that off. That's not a good idea. I do want my content to easily be shareable to other networks for free advertising. So we're kind of jumping around the handout a little bit, but let's say we go back to, let's say, frequency. We've resolved that once a month I'm going to write a new article and my length is 100 words. So we'll see how that looks as we do it in a moment. We need a title, we need a description. So I've got Victor's Bakery. Enter title here. Here's one possible title. Um, Victor's recipe, pecan pie. That's a possible title. It's fine. Here's another one. Recipe of the month, pecan pie. Both of those are fine because I'm mentioning pecan pie, which is one of the big keywords that I care about to get found. I'm using, in this case, recipe of the month because maybe this is the series. This is my series of articles that I'm going to be writing every month. If I want to do it this way, perhaps a better way would be this. I'm going to put instead pecan pie first. Pecan pie, our recipe of the month. Because now I'm thinking ahead about when this shows up on the search engines. The search engine will show my title, which is what we're writing here, and depending on how people are seeing it, they may see the whole thing or a piece of it. So if I've got recipe of the month, and then that cuts off after this point, they're not going to see that this particular post is pecan pie. So if instead I lead with the most important keywords first, that hedges against the possibility that maybe something gets cut off. The most important content and, and words in, in keywords and text is first, so that people can see it faster. So if I call this pecan pie our recipe of the month, that could be fine. Pecan pie recipe of the month, or simply pecan pie recipe, whatever you're going to write. Again, think about how are people searching. What about if I write, what is the best pecan pie recipe? That is valid as well. This is breaking away my concept of having all of these sort of series of recipes, but then I make up for it with my categories, recipe of the month. 
So any of these examples that I've written are pretty good. You'll get a better sense of it as you do it more and as you take the SEO class. But the idea is keywords in the title, think in terms of what people are searching for, think in terms about the most important keywords first. I'm going to go pecan pie recipe of the month. Sometimes people say, well, shouldn't I put also the name of my, uh, my business in the title there somewhere? Not really, because the name of your website will be visible in different ways anyway. Let's say I do a search, uh, pecan pie recipe. Just do a generic Google search. Uh, I get all of these results. The default is that WordPress will put the title of what you wrote and the name of your site for you. So I'm seeing my favorite pecan pie recipe dash Sally's baking addiction. WordPress automatically added that part. Sally wrote this part. Um, Mom's pecan pie, classic pecan pie recipes, Southern Lake. So usually WordPress will put the name of your site anyway for you. So you wouldn't want to put it again here because it'll have your name twice. So there's our title. Think about something memorable, something direct, something keyword rich. Click inside the editing box right here. And now we've got the best thing and the worst thing for a writer, an empty page. And so what we've got, what we can do here is we've got some, uh, some basic editing tools, very basic. We've got bold, italics, bullet points, etc. I recommend that early on, right away, the very last icon, click on that, toolbar toggle. You get a few more editing options. Text color, for example, indenting. There's your undo and your redo. Headings are right here. We'll get to that. We've got some basic editing tools. And above it, we've got a spot to add media. <coughs> media. So that's pictures, video, sound, etc. We can add a poll. That's something that could be interesting. You write your article, add a poll at the end, which is your favorite cookie recipe. And then you've got this, 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 and people can interact. You can add a contact form. So we have some sort of article that says how to, in the easy way to set up WordPress. Have this article, and then at the end says, or if you'd like to hire a professional, contact us. And I add a contact form at the end. And then location. That could also be useful uh, if you think about it, because what if you've got a business with a physical location? My business is on Main Street. I'm going to write articles. And I want people to come and uh, visit my, my location on Main Street. I can attach the location. Uh, you should be able to, just as a test here, that. Yep, Southwestern College. So I can attach a location. Remove it. I can attach a location so that when someone reads my article, and maybe they're on their phone, they will have a little map. We can tap and get directions to my place. Doesn't apply for everyone, of course, but if it does, that's an idea to use. Um, I've got description here, but let's talk about that a little bit more after we've written something. We'll talk about images in just a moment. Let me jump down over to read more. Let me jump to number 10. Read more. Let's talk about that. I want to write a little bit something to entice people, and then if they like the article, they can click to read more. So the first thing that I want to do, because WordPress might do it for me, and it might not be the best result, what I want to do manually is to write how much to show before read more. And then I want to write myself, handcraft the description. So I'm going to be writing Pecan Pie Recipe of the Month. I want to write a sentence or two to catch people's attention. This month for our recipe of the month, we've got 
a classic grandma's pecan pie. You can write what I'm writing or just make it up or whatever. Grandma's pecan pie. Check out how easy it is. I want to write something to entice people to then read more. The way I do, the way I add the read more button then is um, I can press enter. My cursor is right there. And then there's a button. It looks like to me like the stripes on the middle of the highway. But that's supposed to be two sheets of paper divided. You see, it's the third icon on the first row right here. Insert read more tag. So here, after what I wrote, I pressed enter, and on that spot right there, I'm going to click the re insert read more, and that will eventually, once I publish it, and it's live on the internet, it'll have that little bit of text that I wrote, and then automatically a button will say continue reading or read more, or whatever the, whatever the theme says. And I'll press enter, and then now what follows will be the rest of my article. the example over here. If I look at one of my blogs over here, there's this, okay, there's a little bit, there's a picture, a little snippet, no, it doesn't seem interesting, I'm going to move on here. Okay, cool comic book cover, oh, that looks interesting. So then I can click the, then I can click in this case, continue reading. When I click there, then it shows me the whole thing, which has a video and more text and so forth. So that's what that's what we're doing with this, with read more. If you don't do that, most likely all your 100 or 500 or 1,000 words are going to appear nonstop on your blog page. Can you do that at the very end? Can you write everything down and then format it afterwards? Yeah, you can do all the formatting at that. I like to do it early on because I always forget, personally. Uh, but you can easily write it and say, this is a good spot to break it. And then you click where you want it, and then you click the Read More button. Um, let's back up here. Headings. I want to think here, are there ways that I can possibly divide up my content into, into sections uh, for readability? This could be something that I think about now or later. You'll figure it out as you do it, but I'm saying it's a good idea to do headings. Here's how I want to do headings for mine. I have a general section that I'm going to have the ingredients, the preparation, and my own op opinion or comment. So that'd be great to divide into sections. So I'm going to write here, ingredients, enter, preparation, 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 yeah. And then uh, conclusion. These three are going to be my sections. But right now, they look like plain text. They are plain text because notice at the top here, any of this text is marked as a paragraph. Plain paragraph text. It's better for SEO when necessary, to mark things as headings, these dividers, these section dividers, so to speak. And what will happen is if I choose heading one, it'll make that big and bold, it'll change the font, but it'll make a section. Just like on my syllabus, I have a section for course info, course description, recommended books. You know, that bold text is not just that it's bold text. I didn't simply select Old. I went in here and marked it as one of these appropriate things. This is the right way to do it. This is the way the search engines want you to. Not that you select preparation and make it bold. That's meaningless. It's still a paragraph. What's meaningful is that you go in and set a heading. And in my experience, I recommend to start with heading 2 because usually WordPress by default already takes your title shows it on screen as heading 1. The thing with headings is that we should use them logically. 
not sequentially. Meaning that if you look at my syllabus from far away, something is very different, big and bold in the center. This is marked as a heading 1. You can't read it, but it stands out very different from everything else. Heading 1. The title of this document, basically. And then these sections here are heading 2s. All of these are heading 2s. Not heading 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. We don't use them sequentially. We use them logically in that this section by itself is a heading 2 and stuff inside. This section is another section with an equal amount of value, heading 2. If I had a sub-element, if I had here recommended book and I had recommended website, the recommended website, maybe I called it recommended content, and under recommended content I have recommended book and recommended website, then I would have recommended content heading 2 and recommended website heading 3, and recommended book heading three. So again, thinking in terms of what is good for SEO, I'm going to mark ingredients as heading two, preparation as heading two, and conclusion as heading two. Yeah, so like I said, uh, you need to turn on, as soon as you can, this icon at the very end here, and that gives you more options, so you should see your hands there. I didn't. Okay. <laughs> so once you've set these, I've set all of these as heading twos, all of them, not three, four, five. I didn't put them in order. I'm putting them all as heading two because they all have the equal value, the equal weight of a section. Here's how I might possibly... Uh, use subheadings. Let's say I'm going to have a subsection of um, vegan versions and organic versions of ingredients. So that, those I could mark as a heading 3 and a heading 3. Do you see conceptually what I'm getting at? That within this section I'm going to have the vegan versions and the organic versions. These are number threes, heading threes, because they relate to ingredients, which is heading two. If I have a sub subsection, then I go to, the, to heading four and five and six. You hardly go that deep. You're usually dealing with two and three, not one, because one usually by default is taken up by the title and the search engines will ding you. If the search engine sees that you've got more than one heading one, it doesn't like it. But they're fine if, it's got, if you've got more than one heading two, or heading three, or heading four. I usually start with heading two. It's going to depend on the theme, but you're usually safe with, with heading two. You may say, well, okay, great, I, I like the concept and all of that, but I don't like the design. Can we can we change the font and all of that? Short answer is no. You can change, for example, the color. There's a color picker right here on the second row, text color. So I can make that red. It's red. But I, there's nothing here about changing a font. There's no there's no button to choose a font. It's just these things. So this is one thing that kind of annoys people about WordPress that there's very little customization built in. We can do unique fonts and all of this extra design stuff in a couple of ways. If we've got an extra plugin, we could do it. Um, but plugins are deactivated in WordPress.com. You need plugins on your own personal self-hosted WordPress. So on the built-in tools of WordPress.com, there's no button to choose a new font. But do you notice in the editor, on the top right corner of the editor, it says visual and it says text. They should call it visual and code because if you click on text, this shows you the text version, I mean the code version of what you've written, the HTML code. So this is that if you know HTML and or CSS code, you can, write, you can do what you want here. You can do things here that are not doable on the main interface. Just as a quick show-off example here, 
there's no mechanism in the visual editor to put a background color. No problem. I know a little code, and I've got a background color. I know a little code, I can make the text bigger, smaller, change the font, flip a graphic. That is, however, a requirement that you know the code. So for most of us, I wouldn't worry if you don't have a way to change the font or change the size. Just use the appropriate headings as necessary, live with the font choices and such, because it's about your content more than the visuals. And if you do want to educate yourself on what I did here, obviously I did it very quickly, but I have 15 years experience in web design, you can go look at w3schools.com. This is one of many websites out there where you can learn HTML coding for free. There's many, other, many of them out there. I like this one, w3schools.com. Educate yourself on what's the code to make my font larger. It's going to be in here somewhere. What's the code to put a pink background? It's in here somewhere. It does require a lot of effort to learn this stuff and time. But that'll give you more power in your design. So in my hand that I'm just saying, make sure you use take advantage of headings when necessary, as appropriate, because it helps your SEO. So you see conceptually here a section on ingredients, a subsection on all of these, which if I'd like to, I can indent these. There's an indent button. For ingredients, I want to, to list, you know, I'm in over my head here. Um, I want to list a uh, uh, vegan version of uh, butter. What's a vegan version of butter? Uh, okay, I'll take your word for it. Is it expeller or expeller? Expeller pressed soy. Sure. Then we've also got, I don't know, instead of milk, we'll do kefir. I don't know. I'm not really a vegan, sorry. So I'm going to make bullet points here. So as necessary, under, li under uh, lists, as necessary, you can add bullet points. And notice you, you, write, you write your items one line at a time, then you can uh, select them, and then activate up here bullets, bulleted list, or numbered list. The bulleted list is useful for something that doesn't have any order. I need to get these ingredients. It doesn't matter what order I buy them in. I just need them. I need this, I need this, I need that. So bullets work. Obviously then under preparation, I need to add this ingredient to this ingredient first, and then do this third, and then do that. So in that case, definitely uh, the numbered list would be valuable. So let's say under preparation, I go to the preparation section and I start my numbered list. And I'm going to say soften butter number two, whisk milk, etc., etc., three. Mix together, whatever. So the um, that numbered list, it has to be in that order. You can't mix it until you've softened it and whisked it. So that list is uh, 
that's a way to also put your content in into, into chunks. Let's talk a little bit about images. In the conclusion section, maybe I want to show a picture of the result. So uh, I'm going to go down here to the conclusion section. I'll press enter. Notice regular text should be paragraph text. Then we've got headings as headings. We have the option also preformatted, and that's not that common, but that's often used for for like code to show to show things in a in a certain way. You're pretty pretty much going to deal with just paragraphs and headings. So let's say under conclusion, I want to show a picture. We have add media. Click on add media. We have insert media on the left, create gallery, featured image, insert tweet, insert YouTube, insert from URL. So different ways to add media. And media is generically picture, video, sound. PowerPoints, etc. So let's say we're under Insert Media. We've got then on the right tab, Upload or Media Library. Show me a list of everything I've already uploaded. So once you start uploading to stuff to WordPress, it'll manage it all for you. It'll put it inside your media library that then you can pull up and search for and delete from. We've got Upload. I can drag and drop, so if I've got a picture on my desktop or a PDF or whatever, I can drop it in. Or I can click the button to select. And notice what we've got here, allowed types. You can upload JPEGs, PNGs, GIFs, PDFs, Docs, PowerPoints, Open Docs, Key Files, Presentations, Maximum Upload File Size, 1 gigabyte. So one file at a time, the maximum that you can upload is a gigabyte. And you have three gigabytes for free to upload. Notice I don't see anything about movies, but I do see YouTube. We'll get to that in a moment. Create gallery. So insert media will upload one picture to the post. Create gallery will let you choose multiple pictures and different sorts of formats to show a gallery, to show three pictures at once that you can click on the thumbnail and it'll show you the larger one. So the gallery is a way to show more than one picture in a nice way. Single picture, multiple picture. Featured image. This depends on your theme. On this particular theme that I've got on this particular site, the featured image looks like this. It's going to be a rectangular, rectangular image that appears before my post on this theme. Let's see another, another site on the blog over here. There are blog posts with a graphic, a little bit of snippet text. And click to read more. This theme, the featured image, shows up like this. It's on the side of the article. You won't know exactly how it shows up until you add one and then save it and then see it on, on the site. Insert tweet. This is cool. You can search in Twitter. You can search hashtags, users, locations. Let's say cookie, pecan. So all of these things show up, which then I can add insert. That's new. I haven't done this insert tweets like this very often, but that's something that you can do. Insert YouTube. 
You can search. You can put a username. Search videos or playlists. So how to? I'll just put pecan pie. All of these videos on YouTube about pecan pie. And I can attach the video. I don't have to upload the video directly. I have to first put it, in this case, into uh, YouTube, and then I can show it here. So let's say I have an account on YouTube. This will show me all the videos from my account, and I will attach my picture on my post. I mean, my video on my post. Insert from URL. So if you've got a picture online somewhere, you need to have your, your picture. So picture.com slash pictures slash pecan uh, photos jpeg. So this assumes there's some picture online somewhere that you have a link to. You click insert here and it will go get your picture from online and paste it onto your site. We have multiple ways to add a picture. What we'll do is we'll add one of our sample pictures so that we can deal with some of these other things in my notes. So just so that we all have something to work with, let's click Add Media, Insert Media, Select Files, from the box here on the left panel, on this open on this open box on the left panel scroll all the way to the top and we'll go to pictures because we have some sample pictures <clears throat> on these computers click pictures open sample pictures and we've got some pictures here none of them are relevant probably doesn't matter we just want a picture I'm gonna select uh, I don't know, tulips click open going to upload it. So I'm about to add a picture to my post. I can add multiple pictures. I would recommend at least one picture so that it's not a big wall of boring text. Have something also visually interesting. Uh, on a technical level, I actually don't really recommend this picture because it's too big. Let's make some notes here. And pictures are a big topic, so let's make some notes here. Picture tips. Use your own photos. Your own, your own pictures. They could be drawings, photos, whatever. But as much as possible, use your own. Or stock images. Name your pictures meaningfully. We talked about that already. You need to have your pictures named meaningfully before you try to upload them. You can't change the name of the picture after you've uploaded them. I uploaded a picture called tulips.jpg. There's no place here anywhere for me to change that. This title is different. I'll talk about that. But the file name itself. So if I uploaded img0072x5, it's there. I can't change that in WordPress. I have to change it before I upload it. Before upload. Balance file size and file quality. If you take your picture right out of your digital camera, and you rename it nicely, I still would not upload it. It's going to be too big. It's like a 10 megapixel image, 5 megapixel, 40 megapixel, who knows, it's a huge image. It's a huge image that's going to take a while for you to upload and a while for the user to download. This particular one here is 588k kilobytes. We have kilobytes, then megabytes, then gigabytes, then terabytes. One kilobyte uh, is not so big. One thousand kilobytes becomes one megabyte. 
1,000 megabytes becomes 1 gigabyte, 1,000 gigabytes becomes 1 terabyte, etc. So this is about half a megabyte, approximately. This is a bit large because I'm going to add this picture and three more at that size. Suddenly my post is getting bigger, meaning all of these pictures are taking up more download time. More pictures, more problems, as the saying goes. Um, these more pictures are making it, making your site slower. So I'm going to recommend here, balance file size with quality, because I can use my software to shrink that down to 10 kilobytes. That'll download really quick, but it'll also look terrible. The smaller file size you make, the worse visual quality. Okay, great, I want the perfect vi visual quality. Unfortunately, you're going to have a higher size, a bigger size, so somewhere in the middle some suggestions. Try to go between, this is such a huge range, try to go between 50 kilobytes and 250 kilobytes if you want some kind of answer. This is already getting perhaps large because now you've got four of those pictures on your site. Now that one page is one megabyte. See so that one megabyte's not too bad. Well you do that on 10 pages, now you've got more megabytes, more space, more download time. Someone's on their mobile device, Maybe they're on an area with bad reception. The picture's downloading really slowly. They get mad at your site. They don't stick around to read it. They leave. You just lost a reader. And this is a big range. Now, let's say you get it to 280. I'm not saying you did a bad job. Maybe you, maybe you, you shrink it down and you have to keep it at 392. Fine. But what I'm saying is always think in terms about that more pictures will slow down your site. Yes. You can do that in scale image. No. Uh, what's in here also assumes you've already uploaded it properly. If we're looking at these sizes over here, this is still going to be the large size. The large size is still going to be stored on your site. It may show a smaller version, but the large version is still there. And there's another screen somewhere else here to scale too. I wouldn't really recommend those. I would recommend instead to use this website called Pixabay not Pixabay, Pixlr.com, P-I-X-L-R.com. Photoshop works great, Photoshop Elements, there's a bunch of software out there. I think even built into your computer. But Pixlr.com is a site that I like, which is free, that on, on the website you can easily use it to shrink a photo, rotate a photo, crop a photo, add some filters for free. It's under the, if you scroll down, Pixlr Express. If you go to Pixlr Editor, it's like Photoshop Junior with brushes and filters and text effects like Photoshop for free online. But most likely you'll want the Pixlr Express where I can quickly sh uh, shrink it, grow it, rotate it, crop it, filter it. You'll need to explore that your own, and I'll say use, for example, pixlr.com to edit your photos. And then also um, keep in mind dimensions. Dimensions of your picture also affects your file size. If you've got a 2000 pixel wide picture, even if you bring it down to 250, even if you bring it down to 500, it may still look terrible because you have literally that much space to work with. This is always hard to say what, what kind of sizes to, to tell people, uh, but it's going to depend on your theme. One possible size is 1200 pixels. Uh, max dimension, meaning either if you've got a if you've got a horizontal picture 1,200 pixels wide, if you've got a vertical picture 1,200 tall. What about the opposite dimension? Whatever it's going to be, whatever depending on on the uh, on the proportions. So whatever your picture out of your digital camera with Pixlr, you resize it down to 1,200 tall, and the width will automatically change in proportion. I hesitate to say a dimensions because this might be too big, depending on your theme. 
So you'll have to kind of experiment. On some of the websites that I work with, what works a little bit better is 1920. So even larger, because that particular site does focus a lot on photography and to really show things well, we want a big picture. But we balance that with the file size and other things. Maybe on your particular site, you're fine with an 800 pixel wide or tall image. It's big enough to show what you want. Any, any bigger, and you run the risk of perhaps people stealing your work. Because what if you're a photographer? I wouldn't, be rec I wouldn't recommend that you're uploading your work at a very high quality, because then they're going to find it on a Google search and steal it. So on your own personal pictures, again, you might think about these smaller sizes. Maybe 500 is good enough to show the good quality of your picture. There's no real answer I can give you here. It depends on your site. So I'm still in the process of uploading. This picture is a bit large. Dimensions seem okay, 1024, that's fine, pretty good size, but this I would want to shrink it down a little bit in Pixlr. Everything that you upload to WordPress is going to have its own unique address listed right there. So now that you've got an online picture, you can share that link if you'd like. Title, captions, alt text, description. Title is the text that appears when you hover when someone hovers their mouse over your picture. You've probably seen this on sites all over the place that if you put your mouse on some sort of picture, some pop-up might appear that tells you what what it is or what you're about to click on. If you'd like that to appear, it's under title. So just for fun here, tulips our secret ingredient. When someone hovers their, their mouse over that picture, this will pop up. Caption is text that will appear on screen below your picture. So right away, as soon as your picture loads up, text right below it, that's the caption. You could have all three, title, caption, and alt text the same if you want. That's fine. You can put different things on these different fields caption will appear on screen for people. So because they will be able to see it, maybe I'll just make it say caption say our secret ingredient. They'll see a picture of tulips, even if they don't know they're tulips, they're flowers. Flowers, our secret ingredient. So the caption will display on screen. Alt text is what I said earlier that the search engines highly, highly recommend that you do, which is the text that is that is available for people that are blind. The text that, are, that is available for to make your site accessible. I am visiting the site. I'm blind. My computer is going to read to me. It's going to read to me the alt text. I know what it is. Then I can click on it. I can click buy now. So whatever you're going to write in the alt text, think about writing it in terms about what if you're describing this picture to someone over the phone. They have perfectly good eyesight but then you need to tell them what it looks like over the phone. And it's okay to put the same thing for all three. Description is um, for you in that when you upload to WordPress, everything goes into your media library. One of the gripes that people have is that you cannot organize your media library manually in terms of folders and such. In classic web design, I could make a folder for all of these pictures. I could make a folder for all of those pictures and, and keep them separate. But in, in, in WordPress and modern software like this, you just upload everything. It's in one big repository and it might organize it, for example, by date and such. And you've got search. So to find your content inside your, your own library, one way to keep track of it is via descriptions. Usually that doesn't show up on the, on the screen and, uh, for the, person's, uh, and the person viewing. 
but this is for you to find your content after the fact. And I can put the same thing there, sure. Attachment display settings, alignment none, left, center, right. If I want this picture in the center, clearly I select center, right or left. None is that your text should wrap around it, meaning that you've got text here, and I mean a picture here, and the text is next to it. Link to none, media file, attachment page, custom. With none, this picture shows up in my post and it's there. With a media file, the picture is on screen uh, as a certain size, maybe a thumbnail size, but I still want people to see the large version, so that's a link to the media file. It's going to link back to the original full-sized picture. An attachment page is very similar, except that the difference with media file is it's going to show you by default the picture by itself on a plain white background. If you select media uh, attachment page, it's going to show your picture still in the context of your site. It's still going to show your site design, but then just that one picture, nothing else. If you choose media file, it's just that picture all by itself, like on a plain white background like that, depending on the theme. And then custom URL. Well, that's the trick so that when there's some picture on your screen and you want people to click on it and then go, go to whatever site you want or link, you add the link there. So what if this is a picture of the, of the proprietary ingredient that we sell? Amazon.com slash my link. So I can put a link there, my own custom link, for people to click on that. It might not be obvious that it's a link, though. So if you are going to put in a custom link, perhaps mention that under the caption or title. Click to buy our secret ingredients. Now it's obvious that that picture is clickable. And when, it, when you click it, it'll go to that unique address. And lastly, we have size. It'll automatically create we can upload the, the huge 3,000 pixel size picture. And WordPress will shrink it down to various sizes, but your original huge picture is still there taking up space on your WordPress. So there is some ability to shrink this, so if I've got mine which is 1,000 pixels, I'll say show the medium-sized one, and if I had set the other link here, then it could, people could click to see the larger version. I'll just go with medium and click insert. Here's what I've written so far. I've got my picture. There's the description below it. Whoops, I made a spelling mistake. You can click on your picture. It brings up this basic alignment stuff here. A little X to remove the picture from the screen. It doesn't remove it from your library. Once you've uploaded it, it's in your library. But if I click remove, it's no longer in the post. And if I want to further make changes, I can go back to edit the pencil. I can change the caption, the alt text, alignment, sizes, all of that. Some advanced options, like for CSS and such. I can choose to replace the image. There is edit, and here is some basic rotation and cropping. I really wouldn't work with this too much. The scale does 
shrink it down if you choose, but I would highly recommend instead upload the correct images beforehand instead of trying to deal with it after the fact. We still have more to do, but we're, we're getting close to the end of the day. We have one more day of WordPress before we start to wrap it up. Let's scroll back to the very top right corner. Click Save Draft. We should do that early on. We should save a draft, although WordPress is smart enough to save an auto draft. So that if, you, if the power goes out or if you turn off your computer, you don't lose your work. But I want to select Save Draft. If you don't have Save Draft, that might be because you haven't verified your, uh, your WordPress. If you created a new WordPress account, you haven't verified your email, you might not have some of these options. But I have Save Draft and some other things we'll talk about a little later. Preview and Publish. Again, if you don't have Publish, you might not have verified your, your email yet. Click Preview so that it shows you what, are this, what does this post look like in the context of your design, your theme. It opens a new tab. It shows me my, my design. There's my site. looks nice. And then here is the actual post. Because unfortunately, you don't always get the best impression of what it really looks like in the editor here. I see several examples all the time that this looks a certain way here, I go to then to preview and it looks totally different because then it actually really applies the color and the fonts and such. Alright, so it opened the new tab. I'm, I'm going to go back to the old tab. If the back button doesn't do anything. You want to switch back to the other tab. We'll do publish later. We still have more to learn about this at the moment, but we've been covering the different points that I've got here on this checklist. There's still more to cover. I've saved my work so far. When we come back next time, we're going to keep adding to it, look at categories and tags and all of that stuff, talk about the excerpt, other nuances, and then uh, publishing it, scheduling it, all that other stuff that we need to talk about still for the third day of class. Um, any general questions on what we've talked about so far today? We're going to wrap up the main lecture, have a little lab time until 4. You can write more if you'd like, explore other things, save draft. You can sign out at the top right corner if you'd like. You hover your mouse over your icon and then you've got sign out. So we'll wrap up at this point. We'll do some lab time. If you need any help, call me over. That's it for the moment and we'll, we'll learn more next time.